So now it gives me a great pleasure to uh, welcome up on stage the uh, Kai Fakahiri of uh, Kaitahu and a patriotic uh, mainlander, a man who loves the city and the province, and uh, a man who I uh, am proud to have as a friend in this city. Would you please welcome Mark Solomon? And thank you for being here. Hold fast to the bindings of the umbilical cord to the ancestors, and you will see the far horizons of the heart. The land heaves, a cry heard. Our tears like the river Waimakariri flow, gushing, tor gushing torrents day and night for our loved ones lost in the earth's tremors. You will never be forgotten eternally in our hearts. The 22nd of February altered the course of Christchurch and the history of Christchurch and the nation. It created inexpressible tragedies and Naita who acknowledges the whānau mourning for those lost in the quake. We acknowledge all those who have lost homes and all those dealing with financial and emotional hurt. We extend our aroha to all of the people of Christchurch. We also acknowledge the many heroes who have assisted us and helped us reclaim some of our daily routines. The dedication of our neighbours, our friends, our nation and the many other nations that have helped us. The scale, complexity and enormity of the challenge facing Christchurch is extraordinary. However, by working together, by being both diligent and creative and by reaching within ourselves to find the energy to achieve our restoration, we will succeed. Within the Christchurch area, Waitaha first established the Puari settlement over 700 years ago on a large island-like area between the modern-day Carton Mill corner and the loop in the Avon River near the King Edward Barracks site. In the 1500s, Ngāti Māmoi migrated from the North Island and settled within the Canterbury area, including at Puari, before spreading further south. This was followed by the migration of Naitahu from the north onto Banks Peninsula, into Canterbury and throughout the South Island during the 1700s. With the establishment of Kaiapoi Pā by Ngai Tuahuriri Chief Tūrāko Tahi, Puari became an important trading post and Mahinga Kai site. Later Ngāti Huikai Chief Tautahi established a Kainga settlement and established several other Mahinga Kai within the inner Christchurch city area, leading to his name being given to the contemporary Māori name for Christchurch, or Tautahi. Our aspirations for the recovery of Christchurch are contained in a simple yet bold tribal whakatauki, or proverb, mō tātou a mō ka uri a muriaki nei, for us and our children after us. Naitahu desires to see the rise of a sustainable global city, of a passionate city full of art and culture, and services that provide for our grandchildren and their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren to come. Having visited the Share an Idea website, I can see that this is also the view of so many of our city's residents. It is quite inspiring to read about the ideas on sustainable transport models on parkland and culture. These ideas reflect our shared belief that the community is the recovery. The reason that buildings and transport models matters is because people are in them and use them. So on behalf of Naitahu, we join with you, Christchurch. Let's rebuild our city. Kia ora tātou. Thank you, Mark. Now I'd like to welcome up here uh, the Minister of Earthquake Recovery, Mr. Jerry Brownlee. Welcome along, Jerry. Good to see you here this morning, mate. 
I think, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I won't go through the long list of introductions that, uh, or acknowledgements that uh, I could uh, today for people to express their views, so I want to make my comments uh, relatively brief. Having said that, it's, I'm a politician, it's election year and you're a captive audience. <laughs> I think hearing from both Mark and, uh, Mark, uh, sorry, Mark and Bob about the past history of uh, Christchurch is useful. What it tells us is that this has been a place of settlement for a very long time. Historically though, Mark, I'm a little interested to note that uh, Naita, who came here in the 1700s, and Bob claims that Christchurch's origins come from Henry VIII in the 1500s, so <laughs> perhaps a little bit of revisitation might be useful. <laughs> we can talk uh, many times, I'm sure. The real point is that it has been a place of settlement for a long time. There have been a lot of natural disasters here over that period of time, and people have stayed here. And we are obviously staying here now. And while our city, as we know, post-European, uh, was not directed by a council or by Wellington, but rather from well-meaning people uh, thousands of miles from here in the old home countries, they didn't do a bad job, in my opinion. And I think the grid pattern that we've got to work with uh, is something that we should uh, uh, not be necessarily totally wedded to, but not too quick to dismiss either. It's interesting that uh, when the uh, uh, first, uh, what they call the Cannery Association, came here, uh, they had to deal with the Deans Brothers first, who had a lease from Naitahu uh, for, that extended six miles in a radius from Rickerton House, a very large amount of land. Uh, there were various arrangements made, and ultimately uh, the Kemp purchase was achieved. And I remember when we were looking at a management plan for Rickerton Bush and Rickerton House, uh, Rick Toe from Naitahu made the comment, uh, well, you're Scottish, referring to me, he said, I'm Maori, uh, the Deans were Scottish, and when the British arrived, the English came to set up the city, both the Maori and the Scots got done. So we really, I think, can also accept that there's always going to be a lot of contest about how things are done and where we go to from here. And it's good that we do have that vibrant debate and that everybody who wants to have an opinion heard has a forum like this to, to get those ideas out. One of the uh, things that those uh, early uh, settlers here uh, were able to do was move very, very quickly. So in the first 50 years of, uh, of post-European settlement, a lot was achieved in this city between about 1850 and 1900. They didn't have uh, a lot of the resource laws that we have now. Uh, they did have some, but not to the same extent. And they did also have a superintendent who had very wide powers. I'm not saying that we've paralleled that, but we have recognised that for the City Council to move forward uh, in, in developing uh, the, the, the city the way that we want from this disaster, greater powers are going to be necessary for them to move more quickly. If you just think about the information you've heard in the last few days about the number of buildings that are seriously damaged in the CBD and then the number of buildings seriously damaged in the wider Christchurch area. You get to a total of in excess of 1,200 still at this point, despite everything that's happened, needing demolition. To go through business as usual for that process would see us held up literally for decades. So we can't do that. And one of the things that uh, the government has done is put in place with the support of all the parliament and I acknowledge all my parliamentary colleagues who are here today who are part of this, is uh, create the SARA organisation, the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority. It's a government department, uh, and it, uh, as you know, will have uh, the leadership uh, uh, given to it from Roger Sutton. Uh, but it enables a very direct connection between government and its agencies and the City Council and its agencies, and we are partnered in all of that, both of us, the City Council, and the government with Naitahu as well. And in that environment, I think we've created a, 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 op, a proposition to be able to achieve things relatively quickly. But in a recovery like this, relatively quickly is a long time. So today I hope uh, we're able to get to a point where we're not overly prescriptive about what's going to happen. We're not overly dominate, domineering in the ideas that we have, but uh, able to, over the next nine months or so, see the Council come up with a, pretty much a design brief for how Christchurch might develop in the years ahead. 
because we need to think beyond the rebuild and into the constant redevelopment and regeneration that happens in great cities anywhere else in the world. We were very, very lucky, I think, to have the foresight of our, our, our um, community leaders in putting Hagley Park in place, although some people have told me that that was a, a condition of the deans relinquishing their lease. They wanted to have a buffer between the Anglican community in Christchurch and the Presbyterian community in Rickerton. Um, as a Catholic, I'm not sure where we fit it in. But, uh, <laughs> the real point is that we have huge opportunity in front of us, uh, and with the sort of goodwill that we've got at the moment, we're literally in the city and outside the city as well. There are tens of thousands of people doing a little bit extra to help that recovery. Uh, then I think we will be in good shape uh, before too much longer. So thanks for your participation. Thank you to the council for putting it on, uh, and thank you to uh, all of those people in those organisations who are supporting us. Thanks very much. Thank you.